OK, we're going to be thinking now about linear transformations of roots. And I've said here, suppose that we transform the roots of a polynomial. So I've got this polynomial that I've got here, and the roots of this polynomial are clearly minus 2 and 5, and I'm calling those roots alpha. And so I could work out what the quadratic equation was by saying it would be x plus 2 and x minus 5. So this is what the quadratic equation is. And I'm transforming those roots so that I'm taking each of the roots and I'm subtracting one from them. So you can see this 5 root has become 4, and this uh, minus 2 root has become minus 3. And so I could work out what the quadratic equation was by doing it as x plus 3 and x minus 4, and now saying that this is the... Um, this is the transformed version of this quadratic, and it's shifted to the left. So I said if the polynomial is in factorized form, then the transformation is really obvious. We can just replace each root with one less in the equation. However, it's not so obvious how this affects the polynomial in ax squared plus bx plus c form. How do the coefficients change? So it's not clear by looking at this bit and then looking at this bit to think what has actually happened to the roots. And we want to be able to express the relationships between these things and try and go from this to this without having to do any of um, the factorized forms, because for cubics and quartics, it's not going to be very useful. And so we want to be able to go straight from this version to this version after they tell us how the roots are actually being transformed and changed, OK? It will make a lot more sense when we see this with an example. So it says here that on the previous slide, we had the polynomial x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0, which had the roots of alpha and beta. Without finding the roots, that's that key little phrase they like in this topic, determine the equation that has roots alpha minus 1 and beta minus 1. So what's actually happened here is the roots have shifted to the left because we're subtracting 1 from them. We're going to try and come up with the answer of x squared minus x minus 12 without solving the equation and finding out what the roots are. Okay, it's a quadratic, it's kind of obvious. But for quartics and cubics, it's going to be a little bit more demanding to do. So um, there's another method where you can look at the different sums of roots and things. But it's, it works well for quadratics, but it doesn't work so well for cubics and quartics. It becomes more demanding. So I only want to teach you this substitution method because it's perfectly good and it works really, really nicely. But if you do think of like alternative ways of doing it, there are other ways of doing this. So we're going to use a new variable to represent the transformed variable. We're saying that our equation is eventually going to be something like an aw squared plus bw plus c equals 0. We're going to have some kind of polynomial that looks like this. So we're saying that in our new polynomial, the x values have had 1 subtracted to them. The whole graph is going to be shifted by 1. And if I want to be able to find out what that is, well, I actually know what the x values are. So I take this new variable to represent the transformed variable, and I'm going to rearrange this to find out what x is. And then I'm just going to substitute it into this thing that I've got here. So I've used this new variable. The next step is going to be to rearrange it so that I get w plus 1 is equal to x. So I rearrange. And then the next thing I do is I substitute. So for my substitution here, I previously had x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. And so I'm now going to substitute in w plus 1 in place of x. And that should hopefully make sense why we're doing that, that we're just transforming the original variable x into a new variable w. So x squared would be w plus 1 squared minus 3x, which is going to be 3w plus 1. And then you still have that minus 10 at the end that we've got here. Okay. So w plus 1 squared, you're going to need to be able to expand brackets very quickly here. Andrew, that expands to? w squared plus 3w plus 1. Good. And then we have minus 3w minus 3 minus 10 equals 0. And so we get w squared minus w uh, minus 12 is equal to 0. And I believe that's what we had on the previous page. OK, so we were able to transform this one. We said we want to make the roots one smaller this time. 
We transformed it by putting in w plus 1 rather than w minus 1 because it was the rearranged version. And we just expanded the brackets and simplified. And we came up with this quadratic that has had its roots shifted by 1. Andrew. Um, if you sort of look at um, the equation before then after, yeah. it's just then um, w. There seems to be removed from the variables times squared and to remove from 10. Is that some sort of which normally happens? No, the, the, the difference of 2 here and 2 here is just coincidental. Yeah, okay. It's coincidental. And so what I've put in this note here, I said the above is effectively a pure year one or GCSE style method involving fun function transformations. We know that the roots have been translated one left. So actually what we're trying to do is we know that a translation of one to the left if, is f of x plus one. You've been doing that in um, pure maths at the moment as well. So that's why we're substituting in w plus one or x plus one, because we know that if it's translating to the left, that you would do x plus 1 as the substitution. Does that make sense from what we've been doing in other maths as well? So for a quadratic, it's pretty simple, but it's going to be a bit more complex when we get to things like a quartic equation that we have as well. Okay. So this time, we have this quartic equation, which is x to the 4 minus 3x cubed plus 15x plus 1 equals 0. And it has the roots alpha, beta, gamma, delta. And it wants you to take the roots, double the root, and then add 1 to the root. And so what we said in the last time is we would say let w equal 2x plus 1. We're taking the roots, we're doubling it, and we're adding 1 to it. What did we do after we said let w equals? You rearrange for x. So you will have w minus 1 over 2 equals x. So that was our rearrange step. And what was our step afterwards? Good. We're going to substitute w minus 1 over 2 equals x into this expression that we've got here. So you're going to try and uh, I'm going to give you some tips about the best way to do this. Notice how there's no um, squared thing here. It's just got a, it doesn't have a squared. It just has that one missing. OK, so there's a few different ways that I might approach this. I would want to get rid of the fractions here, here, and here. When you're doing to the power of 4, you're doing the numerator to the power of 4, and you're also doing the denominator to the power of 4. What is 2 to the power of 4? 16. 16, OK? So that's going to be w minus 1 to the power of 4 over 16. And then my next bit is going to be 3 w minus 1 cubed over 8. Do you see? I'm just dealing with the denominators for a second. And then this one is just 15 w minus 1 over 2 plus 1 equals 0. Do you have any ideas of what you think I'm going to suggest we do next? Good. We're going to multiply everything by 16 because no one likes working with fractions. So if I times everything by 16, I will have w minus 1 to the power of 4. What would this be times 16? Uh, minus, six. minus 6, w minus 1 cubed. This one would be? Um, 120? 120, yeah. 15 divided by 2 times 16 is 15 times 8, which is 120, w minus 1 plus 1 equals 0. Wouldn't it be plus 16? Oh, that's a very good point there. I didn't multiply everything by 16. I need to make sure I multiply everything by 16. Thank you very much, Andrew. Now this is a lot easier to do, right? So you're going to do binomial expansion on this. Do you know the coefficients for binomial for the 4? Good. You could do a quick Pascal's triangle if you wanted to. Or you could use your calculator. I, I don't know what I prefer. I often just think of the Pascal's triangle in my head. So it's going to be a 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 for this bit that we've got. So it's going to be a w to the power of 4. Then what? Minus, because of this bit. Minus 4w cubed. Is it going to be plus or minus next? It's going to be plus because you're going to have a minus 1 squared. Plus 6w squared. 
minus 4wu plus 1. Then for the next bit, I'm going to do the minus 6 and I'm going to put brackets. We're going to do w minus 1 cubed, which is going to be w cubed minus 3w squared plus 3w minus 1. And then I'm going to start expanding these brackets here. Plus 120w minus 120 plus 16 equals 0. So you're going to get really good at binomial because you'll be doing it here. But I like it when you have a standard thing with like a w minus 1, you're going to get that oscillating between positives and negatives and things like that. So we're going to keep going and simplifying. You may not need to do this extra line here, but I find this extra line can be helpful. So I've got minus 6w squared, w cubed, sorry, plus 18w squared, minus 18w plus 6, plus 120w, minus 120 plus 16 equals 0. And then you're going to go through and make sure that you collect together all of the terms really carefully. So how many w4s do we have? w to the power of 4. Just the one, okay? So we've got w to the power of 4. What I sometimes find helpful to do is to like tick off when I've dealt with them because it just helps me know that I've got them all. So for the cubes, I've got minus 4, minus 6. So I have minus 10 w cubed. For the squares, I've got 6 plus 18. So that's 24 w squared. I'll cross off that I've done those. For the w's, I've got minus 4 minus 18 plus 120, which is plus 98 w. And then for the constants, I've got 1 plus 6 minus 120 plus 16, and I get minus 97 equals 0, and that is 1, 2, 3. That's everything dealt with for this particular thing that I've got here. So if the roots have been doubled and had one added to them, they're going to be a stretch and a translation. And you can see that in this thing that we've got here, because over two in transformations is in the x direction, a scale factor of two, and the minus one is a translation in the x direction, moving it one to the right, hence these bits that we've got here. And you could, if you wanted to, you could put this on Desmos, and you could put this one on Desmos, and we could see that the roots have all changed. In fact, should we just do that really quickly, just to see what it looks like? Theo, do you mind reading out the, the original one? x to the power of? Um, x to the power of 4. Yep. Minus 3x Okay, and then the new one was x to the power of 4, w, but we're going to do it, do it as x. Um, x to the power of 4, yep. 10 w yep, yep. Plus 10 to the power of 4, x squared, plus 98 x minus 97. Okay, so let's see if this has worked. This root was minus 0.067. And then we're going to double that root, which is minus 0.067. We're going to times it by 2 and then add 1, which I believe is 0.866, which is the same one that we've got there. This root that we have down here is minus 1.744. We're going to times it by 2 and add on 1. And I believe that should give you minus 2.488 and it does give you minus 2.488. Now, there are obviously going to be some imaginary roots here as well. The imaginary roots will also have been mapped in the same way. They also will have doubled and had one added. Sorry, not imaginary roots, complex roots. So Desmos can reveal some of those things, but it doesn't make it look exactly obvious, really, what's happened to the roots. But the roots have transformed in that particular way. Okay. So we're going to just do one more example together. This time it's a cubic equation that has these roots. So I need to find where I put my pen. 
So to start with, we would say what W is equal to, and you'll go in with that substitution. I think the board has stopped working again for me. So I'm going to let you have a go at doing this one that you've got here. Same kind of substitution, and then we're going to try exercise 4E. Okay? 